Hello everyone, welcome. I am so excited that you are here. We are going to have fun crafting today. Yeah, don't need to hear me in stereo. <laughs> As you are joining, please say hi and just let me know that you're here so that I know I'm not just talking to myself today. Well, hi, I see Sandy and Patricia, and it says two others, but I don't know who. So welcome. We're going to make this super cute card today. We're going to make it together. I have lots of tips to share with you and how to make this really fun fold card. So come on in. Join me. I hope that you have maybe a cup of coffee or something that you're sipping on. Hi, Cheryl and Dawn. Hi, Karen, Diane. This is a live video on Friday, September 24th. I do a weekly live here on my Facebook page. So if you see the red live button in the corner, then you know you've caught me live on Friday, September 24th. If you are looking for these this project, this one, will be on my blog tomorrow, September 25th, pattystamps.com. Hey, Donna from Louisiana. Hi, Sandy. Oh, San Joaquin Valley. You're not very far away. <laughs> oh, I love that. Hi, Patty from Patty. That's so fun. <laughs> Ruth, Ida, Mercy. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you on here. Oh, good. Iona says coffee is good. Yes, I had a cup this morning. It was Fabulous. Oh, I am so glad you're here. I don't know if you joined me. Uh, yeah, I think it was last week that I talked about my trip to Stampin' Up. And I explained that we made this really cute card. Sarah and Shelly and I all made it together. So I think, I'm pretty sure I showed you this card last week and said that we would be making a similar card this week. So that's what it's all about today. We're going to do a Halloween version, but of course you can do this with absolutely any paper, any theme, um, any celebration, any holiday, whatever. I just want to show you the basics of this fold. And I discovered a tip after we made this one. So I want to really show you that tip. All right. So I think we're at the top of the hour officially. Welcome everyone. Hi, Kay, Carol, Connie. Hello, everyone. Oh, good. Thank you. A couple of you said that you shared it. That's very sweet of you. Thanks. Oh, thank you. All right, so this is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 26 years. That's a long time. And I have been blogging here at pattystamps.com for about 15-ish years. It's gone through a few different iterations, but yeah, I love sharing with you through my blog. So if you haven't visited me there, I hope that you'll do that each day. You can also sign up there if you want to get my blog posts in your email. So that there's an option on the left-hand side for that. Oh, hi from Victoria, Australia. Hi, Judy. Linda from New York. Welcome, everyone. Kindle from South Carolina. Tanya from Ohio. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are here. So sweet of you. If this is your first time, please tell me so that I can give you a special shout out. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Ethel. All right, so let's see how this card works. This is so fun. So you have this cute peekaboo window and you open it up and you have a, a place for artwork or a message or a photo or whatever you'd want. Then it opens again and you have two more spots here. So we have an area to decorate and an area to write a message. You could flip those. You can arrange this however you want. The fun part is there are four separate designer series papers that are featured here. So we have one, two, three, four. And this is a great way to showcase lots of different papers from your whatever pack you're using. And like I said, this doesn't have to be Halloween. You could make this any, you know, a birthday, Christmas, um, wedding, baby, 
anything you'd like. But I had not used my Halloween supplies yet from Stampin' Up! from the holiday catalog. So I thought, okay, let's break out the Halloween goodies. And then if you wanted to do a fifth pattern, you could even put a different pattern on your envelope flap. Or if you prefer to make a liner, you could do that. So fun way to um, feature the papers that you are using. Um, oh, sorry, I missed something about... Oh, hi, Ruth. She says, first time. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and Kindle says it's her first time. She signed up to be a demonstrator in July. Welcome. That is so fun. Awesome, awesome. So let's look at the card that I made a couple of weeks ago when I was at Stampin' Up! When I went for my, yes, Ruth, all of my live videos are archived here on this page, my demonstrator business page. Then on the next day, they are all on my YouTube channel and on my blog. So you can always rewatch any of this. Hi, Lori. Welcome. First time. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. So this is the card I made when I stamped with Shelly and Sarah at Stampin' Up. That's a lot of S's. <laughs> And one of the designers there at Stampin' Up! designed this, and then we basically copied it. So you have your peekaboo window, opens up, you have your spot here with your cute greeting, opens up again, you have another greeting and room to write, or you could put a picture, you could put your family newsletter, you could make a pocket and tuck a gift card in here, so many possibilities. I wanted to show you the supplies for this one. This one isn't going to be on my blog quite yet. I'm going to wait maybe a week or so. But just to run down the supplies, if you're curious, it's the Christmas Pine Cones dies. Both of these detailed dies are on there, and they're layered. Let me see if I can show you. We didn't glue down every little last piece, so you can kind of see here there's layers if I hold it closer, maybe you can see the patterns. So there's two different patterns, and it is from the celebration paper called Peaceful Prints. So you have all of these great patterns, and we use these two green ones. So that's what that package looks like. It's an awesome package. I have a couple of extras that I'm going to be using for some of my Christmas cards. And then the Christmas to Remember stamp set, we used that greeting. So this is in the holiday catalog, part of the bundle with this uh, die. And then this paper is part of Celebration. So now if you're watching live or you're watching this before September 30th, this will still be available as a free choice with your $50 online order. If you don't have a demonstrator, I would be happy to help you with orders. If you have a demonstrator, please order through them. I just wanted to show you that this paper is still available through September 30th with your online order. Now, I want to show you... The problem that I ran into with this card and how I solved it, because I don't want this to happen to you. So you can see if I like push down here, if we hopefully you can see from the side. Do you see how this label sticks up because we put foam taper dimensionals behind it? The problem is when I lift up this front panel, it's always getting stuck. So I thought, okay, now what if when we die cut that hole in the front, what if that panel gets attached flat and we only pop up this inside piece? So now you can see I solved that problem. So if you want to copy this, I would suggest that this striped piece of paper gets glued down directly to this layer and then you pop up this one instead and it will solve this issue of kind of getting stuck there you can hear it right you yeah I'm sure you can the other thing we use to decorate here were the holly leaves the gold holly leaves they are also in 
the holiday catalog, and they are lovely. They're really flat and sparkly. Um, let me show you in the catalog. I thought when I saw them here in the catalog, I'm not sure why, but I thought they were puffy. And I wasn't sure if I was going to like them, but wow, I love them. They're beautiful. So that is what the gold holly leaves look like in the catalog. Here they are in person. They're very flat. So it's a mailable, shall we say, embellishment. And I love that, that it's not thick and it won't cause extra postage. This is the bundle here that I was showing you before with the gold, excuse me, with the uh, stamp set and then the pine dies. So it's all on page 17 in the holiday catalog. All right, so let's move on and make the Halloween card together. And I, like I said, I would encourage you, if you prefer to make this for a different type of an, an occasion, don't feel like, oh, she's showing a Halloween card. You know, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to do this. So think outside the box. Think about other papers that you might use, other themes. And then also, I just wanted to point out, you might look at this and say, well, that's um, that's kind of, a, it's not a lot of work, but it's more than just, you know, a flat card, right? However, here's what I was thinking. At Halloween, it's not like you send, you know, 50 or 100 cards, right? Right. When I think of Halloween, I think back to my childhood and I think about my great aunts, my aunt and my grandma. They would send me a card and maybe there was a dollar in it because, you know, back in the 60s, a dollar was a lot of money. <laughs> and that was so special. So a Halloween card to me would be like maybe you're just sending it to a niece or nephew, maybe a grandchild, maybe you're giving it to your own child, but you're not making, you know, a hundred of these for Christmas cards, right? So it's something that's very doable for a couple of special people, and I think it's just perfect. So what we're going to do is use a full sheet of cardstock. I have pumpkin pie, and then we're going to pick out four patterns. And I'm really, really tempted to do it exactly the same because I really love how this turned out. But let's let's look at the paper and let's decide. May, maybe, maybe we'll change our mind here and we'll pick out a different pattern. Um, I don't know. I just, I really, really love that for the front though. So, mm -hmm. I think, I think I'll keep, I think I'll keep this pattern for the front. But... You might convince me. I don't know. You might want to comment. And should we use something different? This is just awfully cute. We could do that for the second page. We could. We could. Let's see. The stripes. I like the stripes, but then it's a little bit plain. I want it to be a little bit more like Halloween. So here is the one that I did use. Uh, we could do that, but... I'm not sure. I don't know if enough of that is really going to show. I thought the small pattern was really good for just having a border. Let's see what's on the other side. Stripes. We could do stripes. We could. We have those stripes. That would work. Polka dots would be cute. Ooh, I think I'll keep that out. Maybe do polka dots. And then let's see. That, um, I'm not wild about this. Bats aren't my deal. Oh, that's really plain. That's not going to work. Tammy says the candy corn. Yep, I used that on the inside. So maybe do you think the candy corn, how about if we put the candy corn here and then we switch it and we do the green in here so that we don't have two black. I think that might work, right? That just might work. And then the boo, let's see. I don't want to make you dizzy by flipping through all this, so I'm just going to find the boo page. <clears throat> oh, this is cute. Maybe we'll do that. I like that. I didn't even see that one the first time around. Isn't that funny? Yeah, so this is going to be the inside. 
this is going to be here. What did we say? Um, candy corn there. Yeah, Tammy said candy corn there. And then, yeah, I'm going to do the same one on the front because I'm just, I think that's too, too, too cute. So, oh, spider web might not show on the darker paper. Oh, you're right. It's not going to. You're right. I wonder if we could put the spider web. We could put the spider web here, but look, I love how it peeks through right there. Okay, so this is a great point. Let's let's flip something around. What about that? That's very adorable. Let's do that. That'll work. Yes, Tina, we could do a white spider web. We could. We could, we could. But let's do these. Let's, I'm going to do these. Going out on a limb, going to do these. <laughs> and they need to get cut at four by five and a quarter. And I think we can cut all four of them at once. I'm going to try because I think we can. We just need to be mindful of our direction. And they are all going the right way. Let's see. I think I can do it. Yep, that just cut right through all four. What a time saver. Four by five and a quarter. And save one of these because I think this fits on the envelope flap. Um, oh, no, I know what I used it for. I'll show you later. I know what I used that for. Hang on. We're not going to throw that away. I have a little surprise at the end. So there we have our four patterns. And for our sheet of cardstock, and again, remember, this can be any color. Um, it is scored in half both ways. So move that cutting blade out of the way, and we're going to score. So we'll score at five and a half. So that's the halfway mark on 11. And then we're going to flip it, and we're going to score at four and a quarter this way. I do not know if you can see it, but I'm sure you heard it, and it's it's scored. Maybe you can see that. Scored in half both ways. And now what we need to do, so here you can see, like scored in half, scored in half. We're going to remove this bottom left corner so that it folds up like that. So what I'm going to do is I am putting that score mark right here in the track. There's a little groove in the track. That is where it cuts and scores. So I am going to cut up from the bottom to this middle score. And there's actually a line right here on both sides and a line top and bottom. And that is where it either cuts or scores. So if you scoot that up and, sorry, I don't want to put my head in the camera, but I'm just going to look straight down. So I'm going to line that line up with my score line. Then I know I've gone right up to there. And then I can flip it and put that score mark again right in that track right there. And then I'm going to cut down and you can kind of feel it when it hits that other score mark, and that will separate that piece. And you don't need that for anything, I don't think. You can use that on another project. And I should have shown you, I had this ready over here. Page 5051 is where you will find that cute paper we were looking at. I've used this cutest Halloween set. I have used the stars. They're self-adhesive. And then when you flip the page, there's another bundle over here, and it's called Frightfully Cute Bundle. I've used the stamp set and the dies from this page. So I sh should have shown you that. Another tongue twister. Should have shown you that earlier, but now I did. So, okay. Um, oh, you're welcome, Lisa. She said she had not noticed that. I'm glad that you saw that. Awesome. 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 All right. So then we fold up the bottom flap. 
and use our bone folder to score. And then we're going to fold the left side shut. Okay. And this one actually folded like really smoothly. If you fold it up and this last flap doesn't fold quite right, you just need to put it back in your trimmer and take off like just a 32nd of an inch or something right there, just a teeny little bit, and that will allow this to fold easier. So then you just want to burnish and encourage all those score lines with your bone folder. And then, just so we remember, I'm just going to double check here. That was going to be the front, right? Before I glue it, I just want to make sure. And then we said this because the um, spider web will show, right? Right, and then this, and then this, right? I think that's what we were going to do. Mix it up a little bit. You can help me remember, but I think that was our plan, right? Okay, so I'm just going to scoot those out of the way. This one I can go ahead and attach. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to use my liquid glue. I had a question from a customer yesterday about the liquid glue. And she said, my paper seems to be warping when I use the liquid glue. So I said, you know, it could be that you're putting on a little too much. It really does not take much with the liquid glue. And I said, also, it's possible that it could be the climate. Um, if it's uh, maybe too moist, uh, humid, maybe that is causing the paper to kind of ripple. But I said, really, just a little bit on the perimeter and a squiggle in the center. Whoops, did you see that? Almost did it upside down. Is really all you need on the liquid glue. And what we love, us crafters, what we love about that liquid glue is being able to kind of scooch it into place. It gives you just a moment to kind of move it around and get it perfectly centered. Okay, so we, oh, and I just blew it. I wasn't supposed to glue the middle because I was talking. But what we're going to do then is I'm going to cut <laughs> because this was going to pop out. See, I was only supposed to glue the perimeter. And probably half of you were yelling at me, don't glue the middle. Um, but that's okay. I was talking. I was trying to, um, you know, give some tips about the liquid glue, and I wasn't thinking. So we will use this piece to cut that. But normally, if you just glue around the perimeter and you do this die cut, then it pops through and you'll have your piece to put in the middle. It's okay. No mistakes, only room for improvement and embellishments, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's put these last two pieces in just so we are done with that. All right. This paper is so cute, isn't it? I love cute Halloween paper, and ironically, that's exactly what this pack is called, Cute Halloween I am not such a fan of like really ghoulish, scary, um, you know, like, well, you know what I mean. Uh, uh, but I love this. All of these patterns are completely adorable. Just, just adorable. Yes, Robin, it's a happy accident. <laughs> so what we are going to do is I used scallop contour dies on this. You can see on the Christmas one that she used the seasonal labels. So there's the shape that was cut through the middle of the front panel on that. You could use um, the, the stitched rectangles. You could use stitched so sweetly. There are lots of dies, even just a square or a circle or a rectangle or whatever. But I really liked the stitched. I thought this was totally adorable. And I like to hold it down with a, a little post-it flag or a post-it note or washi tape or something because um, I don't want this to shift. If this moves, that's, that's going to look horrible, right? We really want that to be straight and centered. 
So I am going to turn around and die cut this, but let me show you. All you need to do is open your card up like this and just run this through and then that will cut just the front. Okay, and then since I goofed, I'm going to cut a second one with just the orange, my um, my pumpkin pie cardstock. So hang tight. Let me put this back in here so you can see the cuteness. And I will be just right back. It's right behind me. I'm going to die cut this. And I just crashed into my desk. All right, so that die cut out of the front. And I actually am going to use this on a bonus project. So hang tight and do not leave. I die cut that extra one, remember, because of my little oopsie. So then what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that this popped out of there, you know, which it didn't, but we'll, we'll pretend, right? And it's going to just fit right back in, okay? And then that's where it gets attached. Oh, that looks cute. I love it. Very cute, huh? Um, let's see. Yes, scotch removable tape would be great. Just reading the comments. Thank you, Mary. Let's see. I don't have a die cutter. Could you glue a piece on the front? Yes, you could totally just decorate the front, but sort of the cuteness of this card was the this peekaboo part so it would just be different where you would actually have all of that on your front flap and then you can do something else here so that would work um sally without a die cutting machine yeah exactly let's see okay thank you everyone thanks melanie for this one i am going to actually use my seal Okay, put a little adhesive there so that I can, I want to hold it and I don't want my fingers in the glue. And I'm just going to nestle this right in place, right into that opening, push down, and now it's going to be securely right there. Okay? And then let me show you a tip on making the um, spider web. My silly brain was going to call it a snowflake, and I just like completely knew that was not the right word. <laughs> I am going to show you, I've shown this before, but I know a lot of people are new here or have missed it. This is an adhesive sheet. I'll show you the package. It comes as a six by 12 sheet. Stampin' Up! Adhesive Sheets. This is actually double-sided stickiness. So this is great when you are using something like this detailed spider web um, or the fence piece or this tree. Any of those will be great with adhesive sheets because it just turns it into a giant sticker. So on my black. You can see I've already die cut some other things here. On the back, well, I guess there really isn't a back. That's so silly. Why do we flip things over? Isn't that funny? I'm going to peel off. So now you can see that's sticky, right? It's sticking to my thumb. And I'm going to put a piece over here. And then I'm going to peel this one and put it right next to it so that I have an area of sticky. The backing paper is still there, so it's not sticky right now. I'm just burnishing it on. And then I'm going to flip that over, and right there is where I am going to die cut this spider web. And I swear, if I say snowflake, I mean, I just might. 
I did, didn't I? Okay, so I'm going to hold that down so you can see. On the back, I'll have my sticky stuff. And hang on real quick. I'm just going to turn around and die cut it. Oh, that's a good point. You could also die cut that, op I mean, cut the opening with an exacto. Exactly. Okay, friends, we have a problem. Let me explain the problem. My die just got stuck in my machine, and it won't move. <laughs> um, we have a problem, Houston. I use an electric die cutting machine because, and I've explained this before, but you might have heard the story, my uh, neck has arthritis between, I think it's like the C3 and C4 or C4 and C5, one of those vertebrae. And it affects my right arm and my hand and my wrist and whatnot. And uh, about 12 years ago when this happened, my doctor said, get this, no stamping, no die cutting, no computer. And I was like, wait, 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 excuse me. <laughs> Um, that's my job. And so we worked together and we found ways that I could um, alleviate the pain and not use my right side so much. And so one of the things was an electric die cutting machine. Okay, so I I just put it in. I uh, It went halfway through and it stopped. And it stuck. <laughs> um, so... I'm kind of, um, well, yeah, I'm stuck. So this card will not have this, the, I was going to say snowflake, will not have, will not have that um, really cute, what is it called? Spider web. Because it's stuck in my machine. Let me just, let me see if it'll go again. Hang on one sec. Let me see. Gosh, maybe if I unplug it, maybe, do you think? Oh my gosh. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, well, I'm going to have to contact the manufacturer, so let's move on. I did. I just tried unplugging it. That didn't work. I've turned off the switch. Oh my heavens. Okay, let's move on. I have other tips to share with you, though, so I think that's good, right? One thing I was going to show you was that I did splatter Wink of Stella onto the spider web after I die cut it. Or another thing you can do is use the black glitter paper. So either of those will work. You can see I used it here. That's going to be on my bonus card that I show you. But we are going to do some stamping, and I have tips to show you here. So let's do that. All of these dies are in the um, scalloped contour set. So I am using, this is the next to the smallest for our stamping on this one. And we are using the cute stamps from those um, sets that I showed you. So this one is in frightfully cute and it's these little uh, jars of witch potion or whatever you would like them to be right and I'm also going to use the cute spider that's hanging down okay we're going to use those two and then the um, you're so sweet it's scary so I'm going to grab that so those three but I want to show you do you see how it's kind of two-toned there and maybe you haven't tried this yet, so I thought I would show you how I did it. 
When you do this technique, always use the lighter color first. So this is Mango Melody. I'm going to ink my jars in Mango Melody. And then I've got Pumpkin Pie. And I'm just going to ink this side. It doesn't really matter which side. Just a little bit. So I'm just kind of tapping in there, right? So now part of it is pumpkin pie and part of it is mango melody. Now I am just going to put it right back into my mango melody. Okay, so it kind of softens that line between them. It's not going to hurt your pad. Really, it won't. And if you're freaked out about that, then you can do it a different way that I'm going to show you with the moon. Okay, so I will show you an alternate way to do that. So do you see? Isn't that fun? You get that two-tone, that kind of a gradient. Isn't that cute? Love that. And then we have the spider coming down. That's in black. My preferred black pad is Memento. If I'm just needing to stamp in black, that's what I grab. And I want it a little further down. I think I did it too far up on the first one cute right and oh we have the greeting in black as well so this says you're so sweet it's scary <laughs> how cute is that now a greeting I usually like to stamp it on my scratch paper just make sure that everything is mounted fairly straight <laughs> love it love it love it Oh, thank you. You like the two-tone. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. And then here's a really cute little tip. I saw that, gosh, I can't even see it now, but there were like two bubbles coming out of that jar that were part of the stamp. And I thought, well, it needs more bubbles. And so I drew the little black bubbles and then I put the in-color jewels so that it would be like sparkly little effervescent bubbles going up. But I was sort of thinking that it might be cute if the bubbles weren't black. And I was thinking, well, it'd be cute in green, but then this one doesn't really have that much green. I guess it does. It has some green dots. I'm going to try it in green. So I've got my Granny Apple Green marker, and I'm just going to do a few little bubbles coming out because I'm going to add those cute gems, jewels. And yeah, wouldn't a witch's potion would be like green, right? That would be fun. And here are my in-color jewels. So I'm going to use the yellow. They're actually pale papaya from the in-color set of colors but uh, they look kind of yellow to me and I think they go pretty well with this. So we will just put some of those on. Do you like these? I think this is cute. I thought it was a super cute addition. And I just like to use my pokey tool as my pickup tool. There, we also have the take your pick tool that works great. This just fits really nicely in my hand, so that's why I use this one. All right, how cute is that? Look at all those little bubbles bubbling up. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you. Christina says she loves it. I do too. I think that is just buckets of cuteness on there. So then as I was talking about back in the beginning when I said that the orange scallop is attached to this page, but I popped this one up so that you have that dimension here. I like to use my foam adhesive sheets. It comes in, excuse my reach, it comes in a pack like this, six sheets, and you can cut them up to any size. And I have a whole little container, I'll show you, already cut up different sizes, and I just love them. So that's what I use rather than doing a whole bunch of dimensionals. And it also gives it like really good stability. 
and you don't have any saggy parts because we don't want saggy parts, do we? We want it to be nice and sturdy. Okay, so we'll put that right in the middle. Cute, right? So then you see it from the front. Open it up. Ta-da! Adorable. So cute. Good. Oh, thank you. You said you're loving it. Thanks, Sherry and Chris Ann. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the middle inside sections. And this one, super easy. I have another two more die cuts, so a larger one and a medium size one for the inside panels. Let's just do this one because that one's super quick and easy. All I did was adhere it and then I put some of the stars. So I'll show you the stars. And these I'm doing flat because if you get too much dimension on the inside of this, this thing is just going to be so thick, it'll be crazy. So we don't want to have too much extra popping up in here. And the stars are from this cutest stars. I think we looked at those in the catalog earlier. These could be any color. I kind of like the orange because it goes with the card, but you know what? The black would be really cute too. Let's do black on here and maybe just three because three is always a good number, right? Yep, that looks cute. Totally cute. And then I have some stamping tips for you for this panel here. Let's work on that piece. So that is one of the larger scallops. And let's do the moon first, okay? So it's also in that same frightfully cute stamp set that we've been using. So we're going to use the moon and the witch from here. And then we'll move on to that other set. So as you saw me do with those little bottles, I did two-tone, but I did it a little different. So Mango Melody on the whole thing, but then I used my sponge dauber in Pumpkin Pie. So I'm getting ink on there. And it doesn't really matter where, but you want to kind of choose like a crescent shape so that it gives your moon that really good rounded dimension. And I'm just dabbing in that crescent shape like that. And then since I was gabbing, let me huff on it a little bit and give it some uh, moisture. And then when you stamp, you're going to see that it has those two colors and it sort of looks a little more rounded than just one flat color. Isn't that fun? I think you can see that pretty well, right? Have you done that before? Have any of you done that? Oh, Tammy, that's cute. She said she loves The Witch. It reminds her of Bewitched. Oh, my gosh. I loved that show. Oh, my goodness. I watched that so much. Thanks, Susan. Glad you liked the tip. So now another tip is when you are doing a two-step stamp like this. So we have a pumpkin outline and we have a pumpkin filler piece. I find it easier to stamp my outline in a darker color first, and then it's super easy to see what, right where to stamp your filler part. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to do two pumpkin outlines. I've kind of got them staggered a little bit just for interest. Ah, Shan says we're showing our age for saying that we watched Bewitched. Yep. I am in my 60s and proud to admit that. <laughs> so then, same kind of idea on the filler part. I inked in Mango Melody, and I used my sponge dauber and pumpkin pie, and I put darker around the outside and the bottom. Just going to dab off a little so that I can kind of blend a little bit. I think I actually kind of took some off. Let me just put a little more. Okay, let's see how that goes. And then normally I would pull this right in front of me so I can look, but I'm going to look right down through my phone and stamp. 
And there you can see that gives that nice kind of a rounded, more dimensional effect than just stamping it in one color. So I'll do that again. Put some pumpkin pie around the bottom and the sides to give that dimension. And then I just kind of stamped off so that I can blend the colors a little bit. I know it's just a pumpkin, but I like to have it look really cool. Oh, Diane says she's 74, still stamping and feisty. Oh, I love that, Diane. <laughs> That's fabulous. Oh, Christiane, how fun. She has the whole set on DVD, she said. That is fun. <laughs> I love it. Oh, good. I'm glad you like that. So then we will have our witch and the pumpkin face. And I have the little leaf. And you put a smile on my face because the pumpkins are smiling, right? Cute. And then we have a witch hat. So don't let me forget. I'm going to give you a fun tip about that. Two tips about that, actually. I did let this dry before I stamp the witch on top because I didn't want it to be wet ink and have this witch possibly bleed. I just, what you know, wasn't sure. Like, what if it bled? What if the ink was still wet? So, there she goes. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, thanks. Genevieve said that that's cool with the pumpkins. Thank you. Um, Patricia says, I'm an excellent teacher. Well, so, thank you. That's so sweet of you. <coughs> Pardon me. I just choked myself. <laughs> yes, Linda, it does give dimension, doesn't it? It does. So, let's see. Oh, pumpkin faces. That's where we were. And they're really cute. Like I said, I like cuter. I don't really like the, the scary, ghoulish things. So I think those are adorable. And then when you have, here's another tip. When you have a tiny little image like this, this is the leaf for the pumpkin. If you're using an ink pad, right, and you're inking, chances are you're probably going to get some ink around here. And then you know what happens if you stamp, it can get everywhere, right? So my suggestion is use your marker when you have just a tiny little image like this, and it will ensure that you don't get ink all over the place, only on your image. Cute. Love it. Love it, love it. And then you put a smile on my face. I'm almost thinking that this would be cute in green because of the green. Do you think I should switch it up and put it down here and do it in green? But I think that's old olive. Um, you know what I'll do? Let's, let's do this. I'm actually going to use granny apple because that's just my favorite green and it's a happy green. I'm going to stamp it right here and see what I think. So what if we did it in green? Let's, let's let that ruminate there for just a second. Tammy says yes green. Okay, I'm going to just decide while I tell you about the witch hat. So this witch hat is also in this set of dies, the Frightful Tags dies. It's right there. I just cut it in plain black. Now you could also, like I said, do it with the black glitter paper, but if you don't have that, I want to show you an alternate idea. I like to take my Wink of Stella and I just squeeze a little bit just to make sure it's flowing and then I just flick and it gets all sparkly all over the hat. You could color like this on it, but I kind of like how it's a little bit speckly-ish. Is that a word? So can you see how it's shiny and speckly? And that gives it just some fun, spooky dimension. I am going to add it with two of my mini glue dots. Oh, I wonder, hang on, where are my black? This would be perfect. Ta-da! Black mini glue dots. Hello. Didn't think of that the first time. So we'll put two black mini glue dots. 
when you buy the black, not glue dots, dimensionals, sorry, sorry, sorry. When you buy the black dimensionals, it comes in a package with the regular size and the minis in the black. Not the white, but the black comes with both. And that's going to go right here on this cute little pumpkin. And then here's a tip I learned from Tammy. And I know she's on here because she's been commenting. She discovered that the square in color jewels are adorable for the buckle on the witch hat. I think I'll use a big one on this one. Yeah, a big one. Oh, I did use a big one before. Isn't that cute? It just makes the perfect little buckle. So thank you, Tammy, for that super duper fun idea. I love it. Oh, now I should look. Sorry, were you all voting? Um, green, green, green. Oh, whoa, yay, everybody says green. Let's do it. All right, so like I said, it could be olive to match the olive paper on our other flap, but I love Granny Apple Green. So that's what I'm doing. Ta-da! And it's adorable, isn't it? Totally. Then our last thing is we are going to put more of those stars. These stars are so fun. They're so cute. And I am going to do the orange stars because we already did the black ones on the other panel. Let's see, maybe there. And a couple more up there. Oh my gosh, the Blue Jays are having a party outside. I don't know if you just heard that, but they just had an absolute party just now. All right, let's put it together. So we just need to, oh, look how cute. Oh, the green does look super good, doesn't it? Ah, oh, I love it. I'm so glad we did the green. Thank you all. You all are so smart. Okay, put that. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Now, here comes the fun part, okay? We have the front, and we get to open it. And we get to open it. Isn't that cute? I love this card. I love this design. I think this is just so adorable. And I really love the bubbles. I'm glad I tried that. I think that's so fun. You're so sweet. It's scary. <laughs> and I like our, um, our, our paper. I like that. See, on this one, there's two black patterns. And I like that it's mixed up on here. I think that turned out cute. And then let's see the difference here. Yeah, I like that too. That's really cute. So there we go. And then don't forget, you, mm, hang on, it's, oh, it's gone missing. If you could see my mess, here it is. I used a piece of the, so, let's see, cute Halloween paper to do my envelope flap. And like I said in the beginning, if you prefer to do a liner inside, you could do that as well. But I think it's really cute when you do it on the envelope flap. So what do you think? Do you love it? Cute, cute. Yes, I do. Oh, you're welcome, Linda. Glad you like all of the tips and tricks. That's, a, you know, I really try hard to make sure that you're learning something and getting tips and helping your crafting and all of that. So let me show you the bonus project then. So when this gets die cut out of the front, I had it setting, you know, here on my table and I thought, well, I have to, you know, make something with it. So I wanted to show you this cute little note card that I came up with. I used a couple of the strips. Remember when we cut our initial paper down, we ended up with some strips. So I put a piece of the boo paper on my note card, then a little strip of the green haunted houses, and then that rectangle. And then remember I showed you out of the glitter black paper, we die cut, I die cut fences and the tree. And then I slipped the moon back behind there just so it would set the tree off. 
And then look at this. I have to show you what I did. This is so fun. I used the die. This die is in this Frightful Tag set. Do you see this die right here? I stamped Happy Halloween to you in the white section. And then look, when you die cut it, it picks up the black. Isn't that fun? It like really sets that off. You can see that I didn't get it straight at first, but when I got it straight, I die cut that one. So before I forget, I'm going to put this back in this package because nothing worse than having a die hanging around on your desk and you're like, where does that go? <laughs> so there we go. Put it back in that set so I don't lose it. But isn't that cute? And then I put another little strip inside and you can see that I've used that black gingham ribbon, tied it around there added some stars. I mean, I just like kept adding. I just thought it was so cute. And then I put the designer paper and that's where that little strip, remember I said, don't throw those away. That strip fits right onto the note card size envelope flap. So there we go. That's what I did. Oh, I just love these stars. I think those add a lot. And the buckle idea from Tammy, that's adorable. Anybody have questions about this? Let's see. I'm just going to scroll back. Thanks, Lucy. Welcome. Thanks, Margaret. Oh, good. Thank you so much. The size, it's just 8.5 by 11, Christina. It's 8.5 by 11. Scored in half, scored in half. You remove this section, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and this is just the note card. So Stampin' Up! sells a package of three and a half by five. They're already scored, so you can just fold them and the envelopes fit. So that's what this is. I keep lots of packs of these on hand because I love, 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 love these. Yeah, so that's what that one is. Thank you all. Okay, so I don't see any other questions, but I, um, oh, Vicki says clearly she needs to buy more embellishments. Let me scoot this over and show you. This is, my, it might not even fit in the camera. Here's my embellishment bucket. I love this thing. All of my embellishments, and they're all labeled because I'm, you know, I like to be able to see the name of it, and I don't like to have to squint, and it's right here. If I keep it right here, on my table, I use them, and I use them all the time. You're welcome, Rebecca. Thanks, Esther. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Okay, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, everyone. I hope that you had fun today. I hope that you will make this. Check my blog tomorrow, pattystamps.com, on September 25th. And that's where you'll see the close-ups and the information, the tips and whatnot. And then you can pin that to your Pinterest board or, you know, whatever you'd like to do. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. Oh, thank you for all the hearts. You are all so sweet. Thank you, Tanya. All right. Well, I will see you all next week. I think it's time for lunch here. My tummy is telling me that. And I will see you all next week for another Live Crafting Weekly video. And have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.